We are talking about classifying triangles. And in this case, for example, two, it says find the measure of the sides of triangle XYZ and classify the triangle by the side lengths. So the first thing we want to do is we can graph this triangle. So we want to set our grid. So this is the origin, one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, negative five. Then we can go and plot our points. So we have x is at three, negative two, one, two, three, one, two. And y is at one, negative four, one, one, two, three, four. And z is at four, negative five. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So that's our triangle right there. And so it doesn't give us any information about the angles or the sides right now. And so what we can do to classify this triangle is we can calculate the distance of each side, and then that will give us some more information about what is happening in the triangle. So in order to uh, calculate the distance, we have to remember the distance formula. So the distance that's equal to the square root and the things that stay the same. The parentheses are always gonna be there. There's gonna be addition between the parentheses. Both parentheses are gonna be squared and there's gonna be a negative sign in the middle. So those things are never gonna change. Um, the things that are going to change are here we're going to compare x sub 1 and y sub 1, and we're going to compare that to x sub 2 and y sub 2. So we'll find the difference in the x's and square it, the difference in the y's and square it, add them together, and then take the square root. So the first thing we want to calculate is we want to calculate the distance between x, y. Move it over here. Distance between x, y. And the things that are never going to change, I always like to write these out first. The square root is never going to change. The parentheses are never going to change. We're always going to have a squared. We're going to add, and there's a minus sign in the middle. So, we have x is 3 and negative 2. And then we have y is 4. Oh, sorry, y is 1 and negative 4. And that's why I put the negative in first because that way I don't forget that there's a negative there already. And then we can do this, these calculations here. So 3 minus 1 is 2, and that's still squared. Still bring down the plus sign. Negative 2 minus a negative 4, that's adding. So that becomes 2 as well. And we're still squaring it. And then we take the square root. So 2 squared is 4. 2 squared is 4. And then we get 4 plus 4 is the square root of 8. Now we can put that in our calculator and we can get an answer, um, but let's leave it as a square root of 8 for now. If we have to do that calculation later, then we can do that calculation later. Uh, the next one we want to do is we want to calculate xz. So we can say xz is equal to, and there's always going to be those things that don't change. We're always going to have that square root. We're going to have two parentheses that are squared. We're going to have a minus in the middle of the parentheses, and we're going to add those two together. So we already know that x is 3, negative 2. 3, negative 2. And then we know we can see that uh, z is 4, negative 5. So 4, negative 5. And then we get, when we go ahead and do those calculations, 
we see that xz is equal to negative 1 squared plus negative 2 plus 5 is positive 3. And we still are taking the square root. So we get xz is equal to negative 1 squared is 1. 3 squared is 9, and we still got the square root. And then we get xz is equal to the square root of 10. And if we want, we can, we can do that calculation later. Uh, we're not going to do that just yet. Uh, and then the last one that we have to check is yz. So yz, and again, there's going to be things that just don't change. So we still have the square root. We still have our parentheses. Those are both squared. There's a minus and a plus. And kind of running together a little bit. So I'll just make this line there to distinguish between the points. So y was 1 and y is 1 and negative 4. So 1 and negative 4. And z is 4 and negative 5. And then we can do those calculations. 1 minus 4, that's negative 3. Still squared, plus negative 4 minus a negative 5. That's actually like adding, so that becomes 1 squared, and we're still square rooting. And then yz is equal to negative 3 squared is 9 plus 1. And so we get yz is equal to the square root of 10. So now we have two sides that are equal to the square root of 10. We have yz. That's equal to the square root of 10. And then we have xz. That is also equal to the square root of 10. And so what we can say is that these two sides are congruent. And if we have two sides that are congruent, then we know the opposite base angles are also congruent. And so we know that this is, this is an isosceles triangle.